Hey fellows, it's Raptor Jesus uh, with another episode of Workshop today. It's actually my birthday today, my 42nd birthday. I've been at this a bit, but not as long as some people, I don't think. Uh, I got my uh, cheesecake here and my uh, A&W root beer, the, the best root beer. Uh, if you think there's a better one, connect, correct me in the comments below. And I also have one of my favorite editions of D&D so far. I, I haven't really read a lot into it because I just got this for my birthday uh, like a week ago. Um, my birthday's today, but I bought it. Sue me. <laughs> uh, I actually like the Rule Psychopedia. It's a, it's really a, it's a complete version of like basic D&D and it even goes for, on to like adding more uh, advanced complexity as you're, you become more comfortable with the system. Some things are a little bit too complex in my opinion, like the weapon mastery rules aren't really complex, but like, I don't know why they decided to put it in such tiny freaking font where you, it takes up like, there, I guess the editor was like, it could only take up so many pages guys, like you gotta make that font way smaller. It would have been way easier if it was just spread out across a couple pages where you could actually read it. Or, uh, I... I actually think it might have been way easier to just already include all of those facets of the weapon mastery system into the weapon descriptions. I just hate having to flip through books. It, it drives me crazy, but that's neither here nor there, am I right? Uh, my next favorite thing about the rules psychopedia is domain rules. Uh, even if your party doesn't really use like strongholds or anything like that, the domain rules are extremely handy for the DM, I think. Uh, it allows you like, to follow basically the domain procedures in order to make your own kingdoms for your own non-PCs. And maybe the players would feel like taking over those kingdoms, you know what I mean? Like, and so that's kind of like easy content for later on at higher levels. And when you get all your ducks in a row like that, things become so much easier to transition between the various phases of uh, the campaign as it progresses. Because, you know, it starts off as a your basic, like, uh, run-of-the-mill, a bunch of dungeon crooks, you know, stealing, like, monsters' treasure and kicking in their doors and going through their toiletries and getting all the best toothpaste. But eventually, like, you start getting enough of that uh, nice, rich goblin toothpaste and you can start making some real bank. And then the best thing to do is, with all that money, is to entice the players to buy businesses, get into strongholds, and all that kind of thing. So, I think even if you don't really do a whole lot of the strongholds things, it's really important. Because another cool thing you could do is make monster strongholds. And you use the same domain rules, but for monsters, like, the dragon collects taxes from all of the various minions on his mountain. Now think about that. Where does all that dragon gold come from? Well, it has to come from taxes. And, of course, when you tax the goblins, how are they going to get gold? Well, they got to steal it from the humans, so it creates an adventure in itself. So, I think it's a good thing to look at uh, the later stages of the game is to build your campaign further and adds more and more like of that nice juicy plot uh, and really easily just by random rolls and tables so I hope you guys have uh, good gaming and I hope you like my video and keep your shield arm strong and have a good day alright fellas